every Thursday, we try to take a couple of minutes to focus on mindfulness, how we can take on mindfulness, and also how we can share it with our kids because it reduces stress. And that's something that we can all get behind, right? So today's mindfulness tip is really for all of us, including our kiddos, and it's doing finger mazes. So what I have, have done is I've gone online and I just put in finger maze and, and then in Google, and then I clicked images and I found a bunch of images and I found one that I could print out and there were many. Um, now you can take these as inspiration. You can blow them up. You can shrink them. You can color them. You, there are all different kinds of tutorials online where you can make one that you can take a, a disc and you can put yarn on it and you cover it with, um, like paper mache and then paint it and it becomes a finger maze where there's a groove to follow through with your finger, which is really good for our kids who have visual issues because for some of us, uh, this, you know, if it's, if it, I would have blown this up a little bit because it gets hard in some of the places you have to concentrate or you lose and can move over to another spot for a, a small kid that could be difficult. So for a small, by the way, this is a rather complicated one and you can get ones that are less complicated. But the whole idea of this is that you can use either a pen or a knitting needle or your finger, right? For little kids, I really encourage you to do it uh, with their finger. That's why they're called finger mazes. Sometimes for older adults, and if you go, I love when we go to the Ren Fair, there are people who make these on these beautiful, beautiful tiles and they come with sort of a stylus. It looks like one chopstick and you can circle around. What we find is that it becomes a meditative state. There's something about the process of doing it that you can start out and have your brain all full of stuff but it requires you to connect your finger to the maze and you quickly switch over to a part of your brain. I could feel it just then happening, even though I'm talking, where your brain clicks over into something that's calmer. And it doesn't last very long, so it doesn't require so much attention. There's something about it, about the fact that there's a beginning point and an end point that's deeply reinforcing, even to little kids. Um, and you can help them to do it to start with by taking their finger uh, and helping them to find the middle point and then giving a reinforcer for when they've gotten there. Now, as they get good at it, um, and it could be something that we just do. We, it's, it's like a palate cleanse. We just do a break. Let's do the finger maze. Um, later on, you, there are different things that you can do to enrich the experience. You can have maze races, right? For kids who like that kind of a thing, you're working on fluency when you're doing it. It does require some hand-eye coordination and you're still relaxing even though it's a time thing. All kids don't respond to time things. So if you have a kid that feels anxiety, yesterday we were talking about uh, a, a student who feels anxiety when there's a time test. Dr. Grampy Shea, Shea said that that's not her favorite thing. You know, for those people, you don't do that, um, but you can add in color. You could take a magic marker so that you can see your way and add in color. For some people, that's more reinforcing. You can take a marble and roll it along. For other people, that might be more reinforcing. Um, and as I said, you can, you can make these out of clay and yarn, and uh, it can be really, really exciting. For people who are getting really good at mindfulness, I would say for uh, older high functioning teenagers and for adults um, on or off the spectrum, later on what we do is we wanna introduce a thought at the beginning, but this is not for our little kids. A thought at the beginning, something that you wanna meditate on, whether it's, you know, what do I need to do to be healthier? What do, what can I do to be happier? That kind of a thought. And then you just float the thought out there and you do the maze. And if you find your attention wandering, you ask the question again, what do I need to do to be healthier? And you, it's, there's not an expectation of an answer or some huge thing that comes, but there is a peace that comes and sometimes an intuitiveness that comes, you know, that you feel closer to yourself and knowing what the answer to that is. It's a worthwhile use of your time. It is meditative and it's mindful and it's something that we can do even with very little kids, hand over hand. Um, and if there's a groove, a lot of times the little ones really like it. Uh, you would be amazed. So check it out, finger mazes. You can Google them, get them for free.